All right, so uh, I'm uh, Jerome Sumang. Uh, I'm a lead software engineer at the HTF Co. Um, so the work I'm going to present, uh, so we had a similar presentation last year, if you were here <laughs> last year. Um, so the, the work that I'm presenting has been going on for quite some time, since 2012. And uh, it ended uh, relatively recently in January of this year. Uh, but we've done some more work since then also. Um, so it's, a, it's been a collaboration between the HDF group and Intel for quite some time. Uh, uh, so what's new in this presentation compared to last year? So I've included more results um, uh, and mostly some refinements on, on uh, so some of the concepts that uh, we'd like you to kind of uh, understand on how we shift from kind of a traditional uh, native file format to some something like the DOS file format. Uh, so we'll see how we how it differs in the in terms of how is parallel I/O uh, with native file format. Uh, what are the constraints? Uh, kind of introduction to Intel DOS, and then this new vault connector for DOS and the file format that it introduces. Uh, we'll see some of these new the new features, and then. Uh, Kind of uh, results evaluation and uh, an application example that can kind of guide you on what you can what you should try to keep in mind when uh, and how it may benefit your application. Um, so uh, parallel I/O with native file format. Uh, so let's take just a, a basic example when you do uh, parallel I/O. So you have an HDFI file, a group, and a data set. Uh, Typically, uh, just trying to hide. Uh, sorry. Uh, so typically, uh, the way you would do it with uh, native native uh, HDF five, you would call H five set five for MPIO, then create your file, then call H five G create, H five D create, H five D write, H five D read. But the thing that you may have noticed is that. Uh, um, when you call, uh, some of the calls that you have to make uh, have to be collective. Um, and there's no, there's no, there's nothing really in the API that, um, that tells you that this call, I mean, nothing from the API is kind of uh, point of view uh, imposes a restriction on the collectiveness of the calls. Um, you see that the HDF5 has, has, has an object based model that defines where well, you see groups and data sets uh, kind of very object oriented, but then the collectiveness doesn't really make any uh, sense. Um, so, and one of the reasons, so POSIX, uh, so one thing to keep in mind is, so uh, native HDF5 uses POSIX and which was designed for disk space storage. Um, and so, of course, the, it was designed, uh, well, uh, by keeping in mind that uh, there is a high latency to write data and random offsets uh, because of the mechanical aspects of uh, hard disk drives. Uh, and the native file format, uh, because it, there was POSIX at the time, was uh, inherited the drawbacks of, uh, of POSIX IO. So how it works on the native file format is that wh whenever you create a, a a, a group and an HDF5 object, you have this serialization on, on disk where uh, your uh, headers and data has to be contiguously uh, uh, allocated on disk. Uh, so there's been a number of uh, mitigations for that. And um, when you have to deal with POSIX, there is nothing else that you can do, really. Um, and uh, so for that, you, you'll, you'll find some other techniques, like subfiling per, per process I.O. And uh, it, it, there are good mitigations. But uh, ideally, what you really want is one, if you want what, just one shared file, uh, you don't really have any other solution. And the kind of sad thing with, with that is that uh, so. HDF5 has a nice object-based model, but then it kind of gets lost in the storage uh, uh, when uh, when writing with POSIX. Um, so to give another uh, kind of uh, illustration of what I just said, um, so let's say you have an HDF5 file and you try to to have um, one data set. You want to to have each of your rank in parallel uh, creating one data set. 
Um, so in theory, what you would do is uh, you would call H5F create and then H5D create with the name of your data set. But uh, like I just said, that wouldn't work. And what that means is that if you really want to do it right now uh, with uh, the native PAL format, uh, you would have to have uh, all your ranks uh, involved in the creation operation and loop over all the, the data set create operations. So of course, the more uh, ranks you have, uh, the more costly it will be. Um, so Intel Deos, uh, so Deos is a kind of, uh, probably heard about it, is a new kind of file system that kind of succeeds to, uh, to Luster and that was introduced by Intel. Um, so it has been designed since uh, about 2012 uh, uh, when we started collaborating with them. Um, and the idea is, so you have a Deos library that's, uh, that's available like a, like a Luster library. Um, um, but uh, the difference is that uh, it doesn't go through the, through the, through the kernel and uh, you can have end-to-end uh, -end OS bypass. So everything is in user space. Uh, the nice features that it exposes also are to expose the key value API uh, for writing data. It supports non-blocking IO directly. Uh, so it's lockless and it has also support for snapshots at all level. So a lot of native kind of features that are directly exposed to HDF5, get, that can be directly exposed to HDF5 and we can directly make use of them. Uh, the, uh, so, so that's on the client side. On the server side, uh, so everything, so you, you kind of uh, reach to the their servers, uh, keeping in mind that uh, you have, uh, if, uh, through, the, through an, um, a network fabric that is uh, dedicated to uh, high-speed transfers. So you, everything is low latency and you have high message rights communications. Uh, everything, most data transfers are, uh, go through RDMA. Uh, there is also support for infinite band, slingshot. Uh, everything is, through, is, is done through the fabric. Um, and then on the server side, uh, so, there are two things to, to keep in mind. Uh, one of them is that the metadata, um, so everything that is lower latency um, in theory goes through the, the Intel library called PMDK. Uh, so that's persistent memory. Um, and the bulk data goes through uh, another lab, uh, Intel library called SPDK. And that goes through uh, a kind of NVMe interface to um, bigger storage. Uh, um, and yeah, and one thing that is important in the design of Deos is that kind of the some of uh, a lot of the choices that were made were made in with the assumption, assumption that there wouldn't be any hard disk drives anymore. So of course, uh, if you take that as a as a starting point, uh, there are a lot of things that you can do. Um, so high bandwidth, low latency storage. And one thing also is uh, you, uh, there is only one single tier. So there is not any kind of two tier storage or anything like that. Just everything is, is, is in a single tier. Uh, so the whole architecture. So the um, uh, native components that we had uh, originally. Uh, so that's the kind of classic HDF5. Uh, so you have the VFD layer with all your VFDs, uh, native vol, um, so with the introduction of the vol, then API and tools. So what we did is that we kind of had to announce some of these components. Um, so basically tools, AP, uh, the HDF5 API where the new APIs, the vol layer has had quite some rework uh, to support the uh, Deus vol with a lot of features. And to add the Deos ball, uh, we added uh, uh, well two components, I would say. Um, so one external test suite to test all the features, and then the Deos ball itself, which is an external ball connector. So it does, it's not packaged with the HDF5 library directly, but it, it comes as a separate package, um, and it allows us to talk to the to the Deos library. 
the the thing though is that uh, we have support from the tool from all, all the tools so you can all use all the tools to to uh, as you would do with native but uh, on top of deals and everything is transparent and it, it just happens kind of magically in some sense um, one thing also to to uh, to keep in mind is that uh, you can still uh, talk to Deos also with using the MPIIO uh, BFD. Um, so uh, Intel has developed uh, uh, an MPIIO backend that that can talk to Deos, um, and um, uh, using using this backend, you can you can uh, just use the native ball and uh, and uh, and run on, on top of Deos. The thing, though, is so uh, that circles back to the question about why not um, the LSVFD is that you will be lim limited by the kind of constraints, the same constraints that we have today with the uh, the native ball. So, so you would kind of miss on the features. So uh, the Deos wall collector how was the question on use of HDL five in Deos. Uh, minimal or no code changes for application develop developer. Uh, so you have two ways to tell which connector to use. Uh, so one is uh, you call it FAPP set for Apple Deos, um, and you pass uh, FAPL ID as usual, and then a pool which can be a UUID or a pool label uh, of the pool of the kind of the a pool in Deos is. Uh, uh, what will hold your, your containers. Uh, I'll talk about, about it a little bit after. Um, and so this way is recommended if you can, can access uh, creating new, if you're going to create new files or accessing multiple vaults. I mean, there may be situations where um, you you may want to to use uh, either native or uh, Deos vault um, or have, your application use both native and, and the Deos ball. Um, so there is also the, uh, a way of setting that using environment variables. So you set in that case, for example, HDA5 or connector equal Deos and then your plugin pass. And then we have also a mechanism that kind of auto detects things. So the way it works is, uh, let's say you call H5 open with your file. Um, so that will go through the HDA5 API, the whole layer. I mean, by default, that would, that's what would happen. That would go try to access the native wall by default. But with that auto detect mechanism that we had it, um, that will actually already write to the Dale's wall connector. Um, and then you, so you saw that uh, to open a file in Dale's, we usually have to, to, to pass uh, a pool uh, label or pool uh, UUID. So that's also taken care of uh, within the Dale's wall. And there are some stops that are created on the file system and uh, which can be resolved through kind of, a, um, there is a mini library called the Deos Unified Namespace that uh, queries those files, kind of stop files from the file system and resolves them. And based on that, it then queries the UID or pull a label, pull labels and um, then accesses Deos. Uh, so the file format, uh, quickly, I uh, think I'm a bit behind. Um, so the, the, an HDA5 file is equivalent to a Deos container. Uh, a root, so you see that if I create a root group, when the root group is created, uh, it corresponds to a set of key value pairs uh, in Deos. Uh, and same when I create a data set, that's a new Deos object uh, with um, what is called a D key. And it, what's called, uh, I mean, there are a set of D keys and A keys. So D keys are kind of distribution keys that allow you to um, spread your data across multiple uh, their server, ta uh, server targets. Uh, and the A key is just a record of the kind of property of the, kind of the, yeah, property of the, of the key. Um, so uh, the, the nice thing that, that though is that, um, um, parallel IO and chunking now become first class citizens and in the sense that whenever you kind of chunk your data you have this kind of uh, new D key that you create and that will spread uh, really nicely uh, across targets. Um, 
So DAOs also has multiple options for data control and placement. So we kind of expose some of them. So one of them is just like I said, you can use HFP set chunk and that will set uh, a chunk in your chunk size um, uh, that you can control. Um, then there is also this uh, object class um, per uh, DAOs object to, to control the number of targets. Uh, for storing objects, so that's really equivalent to the stripe to the stripe count. So uh, when you set this object class, that will kind of tell DAOs how do you want to spread this um, this object uh, over the storage targets. Um, so they are by default uh, we spread everything uh, over all the targets available, but there are some things that you can choose to uh, to to kind of uh, decide on that. Um, and again. A, so one thing to uh, to consider is that targets are not really equivalent to storage nodes, and you have multiple storage targets per node. Uh, so we can also control the number of repl replicas. So that's also something that DAOs allows. You can also set some properties on the content entire container itself, and that's a new routine that was added. H5 DAOs DAOs set prop. Uh, all features are supported except some things that specific to native file format. Uh, additional feature implemented. So we have a map object. So that really gives an interface directly on top of the key value uh, object that DAOs uh, uh, introduces. So we have file deletion. So independent metadata, like I said. Uh, so HDF5 object can be created independently. And for that, currently you have to set this uh, property called H5 DAOs that all independent metadata ops which may become the default behavior in the future. Um, and then asynchronous I.O. So uh, asynchronous I.O., so we enable asynchrony using event set API. Uh, I don't want to go too much into the details of asynchronous I.O. because uh, I wouldn't have time uh, in that presentation. But um, just know that we support asynchronous I.O. So HDF5 API returns before the operation completes and um, we place the operation in an event set. Uh, and that uses the DAOs task engine. So everything is kind of supported natively by DAOs uh, under the hood. Um, asynchrony must be ex explicitly controlled by application. So there is no kind of implicit asynchrony. Um, and it's similar to, to some sort, if, you use MP, if, you, if you're familiar with MPI, it's just uh, using kind of the same uh, model of MPI non-blocking. Uh, and you would you use the async versions of all routines that may block. Um, one thing though to, to kind of be careful about is that um, when, uh, when you use HDF5, you may, you, it's very easy to create uh, a lot of dependencies like uh, H5D create async uh, and then H5D write async. So you see that the write depends on the create um, to finish before it can start. Uh, and um, when you make progress and call H5ES wait, you have, you have to, to be, um, careful about that, uh, meaning that it's not until that you call H5ES wait that you start progressing the kind of chain of operations. Um, so uh, quickly, um, the evaluation uh, that we've done, uh, so we've just evaluate, evaluated the uh, uh, Odeo's role on uh, Frontera, uh, it has like four storage nodes. So it's kind of, it's kind of a small setup. Uh, but uh, it has uh, it, it had uh, Intel obtained persistent memory dims and uh, it also had infinite band uh, interconnect. Uh, software used at the time was uh, Deos version one one to one, and that uh, has evolved since then. So the results that I'm showing now uh, may be a bit different uh, when you if you try uh, now. So using IOR, you can see that um, so. Just pay attention to the, the green and blue lines. Um, so green is uh, using the native VF, native uh, VF, native VFD using MPIIO, and blue is the using the DAOs wall. Um, so for con for kind of contiguous uh, workloads uh, using IOR, so with small IO, um, you see that in general the DAOs DAOs wall performs better. Um, and for reads, the limitations for the limitation for the MPIIO was mainly due to, to the caching uh, that kind of uh, um, uh, performs lower here. Um, 
for larger IIO using one megabyte transfers, uh, we kind of so uh, we kind of saturate the network for reads, um, and that's uh, using the DLS4. Um, for writes, it's mostly equivalent to to the MPIO VFD. But uh, remember, uh, remember that it, that this is um, using uh, <coughs> this is using uh, uh, contiguous IO. So. Uh, and I'm mostly done. Um, so uh, just an example with VPIC that we've done. So um, the idea here is just to show that uh, we don't have the constraints anymore to, uh, uh, we can really create one data set per, per rank instead of having this collective creation of uh, data sets and groups. And uh, you can see uh, on the right, so we changed the really the data model of VPIC, uh, I mean, the storage model of VPIC uh, to kind of enable like one, uh, to kind of store one particle per, de per data set uh, instead of having this array of particles where you have either to sort them and then keep the index and so on. And you see that um, uh, the difference here is that as we increase the number of nodes or ranks uh, here, and if you keep the number of particle constant, uh, uh, the, the time remains the same and it's much lower than uh, if you had to do that with native uh, by, I mean, several orders of magnitude. Uh, so in conclusion, the native file format in inherited limitation from block-based model, and that's something that uh, you have to keep in mind. And that's why it's better to switch to DAOs when it becomes available. Um, and the switching, switching to an object-based model is more in line with an HDF5 data model. Um, we don't have any more parallel constraints and can map much better to the application's data model. Uh, it's switching to the DOS world is a one line code change. However, uh, if you want to use something like SNKIO maps or fine grained data control, you'll have to make more changes to your code, of course. Um, and it will be fully released along with the HDF5.113. It's still in release candidate right now. Um, but uh, you can, if you have access to an LDO setup, you can use it. Um, and yeah, I'm one minute over, I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you, Jerome. So a question for Jerome. Uh, so uh, with the DAOs, you looked at the VPIC IO, uh, which is contiguous data sets. Have you also looked at any other non-contiguous or compound data types type of uh, uh, objects? Uh, well, so I, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, we had also, we tried also, I mean, actually VPIC was also using compound data types. Data mm -hmm. types. Uh, um, in that case, I mean, in what I was showing here, uh, I had actually one data set and it, the data in each data set was a compound type uh, with uh, all the fields in one compound type. I mean, that's maybe not really the, your question, though. So yeah, my question is more about the performance. How does it look like? Uh... So yes, I guess. So your question is, how does the performance compare between to... contiguous and compound? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, I don't have those results. Uh, okay. Yeah, but we. Uh, it's kind of. <sighs> Uh, it, it definitely uh, we will need to do more benchmarking when we have time and when there are kind of stable releases of everything and it's available more on systems where it's uh, not you know small systems mm -hmm. uh, right Jerome we still do not have access to systems where we can scale right Right. Small, class, small clusters. So uh, I guess uh, time is coming. So it will be exciting to then start running all those benchmarks and see results. But independent access, of course, it should be a big win for HDF5 applications. That will be much easier and asynchronous, of course. And uh, have you also compared the MPIO, uh, go, going to there through MPIO and going directly through the wall connector? So that may be another comparison to do. 
Okay, maybe we can help that. Um, uh, oh, I, I think we did, right, Jerome? It was in our... Right, so I think that was in the slides that you... Uh, the first slides using IOR that you saw is uh, using either the MPI, IO, VFD, so that goes through the OS. Um, yeah. And then the other one goes through the OS4. Um, mm -hmm. so. I believe report is public now, or it may be requested from... Uh, I think it is public. Um, yeah. Can you send the link if there is already on? Yeah, I can find them. Yeah, uh, Jerome, it's interesting the like the comments you had about how the the POSIX uh, model is is kind of hindering performance. And I was curious, you know, have you looked at, uh, for example, like a, how Czar is structured or how uh, the HSCS uh, object store is set up? It seems uh, maybe quite similar. To format DAOs is using. Um, yeah, I haven't looked closely, but uh, yeah, I know it is very similar. Uh, and I think, uh, I mean, any object store, I think, would be very similar. Uh, right, right. Yeah, I just wonder, you know, there's interest in uh, kind of taking this this model more broadly uh, than uh, yeah. the DAOs uh, usage. Yeah, I think uh, that's something that. That should be done eventually, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Because yeah, any object store vault would need to kind of keep that same a similar file format, and we've seen that with other vaults uh, already. So, um, yeah, I think that's a very good suggestion. Um, if you don't mind, I actually have a question. Um, it's curious, like um, how how you implement the the reference counting. In DAOs, right? So let's say in a library, uh, you, you remove the last link to a data set, and that data set uh, gets uh, removed. Uh, is, does that work the same way with the DAOs? And then how, how do you figure out uh, the, the reference counting in this um, you know, uh, asynchronous environment? Uh, well, I mean, um, uh, I mean, we, uh, if I don't know if you saw in the in the slides uh, that's that uh, talks about the file format. So we keep a reference count for each object. So mm -hmm. I mean, that's just a value that you have to kind of keep uh, incremented or decrementing uh, every mm -hmm. time that you mm -hmm. uh, that you do something to. Right, but see, the problem I, I, I ran across with HSCS is that you have, uh, say, a group that's stored in a different partition, and now you've removed this last link to an object stored somewhere else. Uh, it was just a little tricky uh, to, to do that in a you know, multi-writer environment. Mm. And, and yeah, I, I don't think we have this problem. Uh, I mean, I don't know if John, John, are you here? I don't know if you're yeah, here. here. I, I was just going to mention, uh, like Jerome says, I think I think Deus tends to take care of that for us because the fact that we store the reference count for objects as a key value pair, I think Deus handles the concurrency of keeping that updated um, internally. And whenever we create uh, asynchronous tasks that might affect the reference counting, we mm -hmm. tend to set up a dependency chain between the tasks to make sure that the reference count, uh, you know, increment or decrement is is tied in with the op the operation that's happening and doesn't mm -hmm. run wild. Okay, huh? So it sounds like you're you're taking advantage of some special Deus features. Yeah, I think, I mean, things are hidden, I mean, kind of hidden be, behind DAOs. Uh, think, uh, maybe some of the things that you have to do are more kind of uh, exposed to you, but... Uh, right, right. So in HCS, I'm, I'm trying to take a lowest common denominator approach uh, because they don't allow especially code for doing, say, S3 versus Azure versus POSIX and so on. Mm -hmm. um, okay, interesting. <laughs>